<laughs> Hello, everyone. We're going to do things a little different this time. My man Mark always leads us in, does a great job, but I'm going to lead us into the Ohio WrestleCast. We are here again with our special guest, Mr. Lights Out, Jeff Hughes, co-host of the, uh, the, the Jam Up podcast is that what we call it yeah, yeah jeff, and mark's untitled podcast. jeff jeff and mark's untitled podcast is a co-host there so we're merging both worlds with the uh the untitled podcast and the higher wrestle cast and we're uh we're just gonna have a great time talking some more professional wrestling here oh yeah so we got of course your main host mark thomas yep i am jared griffith slash wilbur whitlock and uh the last uh the last episode i feel like we we got along a little too much <laughs> now we're three friends we've been friends for well we were we've known each other our entire lives but we've been friends for a long long time more than half of our lives at this point yeah. and uh but so you know we have a good conversation about pro wrestling and a lot of agreement that's great but i, I think it's a little more fun to maybe have a little bit of banter maybe have a little bit of controversy oh shit so i think i think today it's gonna happen i think today it's gonna <laughs> this happen is the one. now first off since we have live microphones and a live camera I would like to to pass over to Jeff Hughes and just say that during our little intermission here, mm, I on. wanted to be known. I wanted to be public record. Now, fairness, this is one match, and I and I gave you one match. So I wanted to give you what I thought might be the best. But we watched. If you listen to our last episode where we talked about our top tag teams, I got groans, eye rolls, and snores <laughs> talking about the Midnight <laughs> Express. <laughs> We put on Midnight Express, which is the Fantastics. It's from the very first Clash of the Champions. And if you haven't seen this match, you should go and watch it. I'm going to pass it to Jeff Hughes. Jeff, give your opinion on that match from March 1988. What'd you think? I enjoyed that match a lot. And I thought it was very fun. And Cornette was the cherry on top. He really was. When I talk about how much I love Midnight Man, I I will throw Cornette in there immediately because he, he is such a huge part of that package. It was a lot of fun. Um, it holds up to this day, and a lot of stuff thirty years ago does not come close to it. And I, ha- I mean, I, mean, I mainly because it, he loves them is why I bash him so much. But th- it's true. I just. Yeah, I've uh, never really got into him. Shameless, a lot of shameless do. love for the Midnight Express for me. I've always had it. Mark, what do you think, man? What, so that was uh, Honest, probably your first introduction to something like you know we talked about it last episode where some of that classic wrestling from NWA, WCW, some really good stuff. No, for sure. Uh, what do you think? I was surprised at how much I did like it. Like, uh, <laughs> That's I, fair. The thing, right off the rip, I was like, I felt like, did they speed this up a little bit? Because it felt like they were all moving really. They, fast. they were moving fast. They were working. They yeah, were working and, hard. It, it, you could tell they kind of gassed out a little bit by the end, but I think that was probably also a work at the same time. But as, as you should, you shouldn't. You should never be going as hard fifteen minutes in as you are in the first minute, minute and a half. If you're in a real fight, you want to win it. You know, yeah. you want to win that fight. If you realize that you're not going to, Jeff can attest to this. If you know that you're not going to win that fight in the first couple of minutes, then yeah, you might need to pace yourself because you could be fighting a long time. Yeah, yeah. There was a there was a lot more like performance going on too. They were selling a lot. There was. Headshots with chairs, like the tables a lot. Miss like, those. It was yeah. a wild brawl and a good tag team match, telling a good solid story. Great, great tag match, man. I I love that match. Uh, we'll watch some more Midnight to just let you know how right I am. It's fine. All right, I'll do it. <laughs> um, if it was anything <laughs> like that, I, I enjoyed it. I really did. Yeah, and I know. Josh Griffiths is oh Josh is, heard Josh this is somehow broke and, whatever device he's listening yeah. to us on right now and that's okay he's yeah. he's gonna do it later too <laughs> so, so hopefully hopefully Josh holds off and breaking his device till the end because I don't want him to pick it back up listen to the, the rest of the show right. and then break the next device because yeah. he's probably gonna do it <laughs> nobody has broke more devices than that that guy right there uh, and he needs to get on the show Mark we no. we you know. What how we can invest in another microphone if we, if we pick up and maybe we'll have a a, a four person cast of oh, us fun. just yelling Down at each that. other. Yeah, but uh, between us three, it'd be pretty bad. It would be pretty bad. I've already gotten slugged just talking wrestling today. <laughs> <laughs> it's happened. Uh, <laughs> the wrong person too. <laughs> but uh, 
I mean, this, that's why I think this is fun, and I hope it. I hope it catches on. I hope other people know how much fun we're having. You know, just some dudes talking, talking wrestling, because this is this is literally what we do all the time anyway. Yeah. Now we just have a microphone in front of us. Now we have <laughs> microphones and video, and hopefully listeners. You should have been doing it this whole time. <laughs> what the hell? Well, we can keep doing it, but uh, today let's uh, let let's do something that, like I said earlier, something that's going to. Uh, maybe we should start up a little bit of controversy. Maybe we get some different opinions. Because in this case, really, all is opinion. We talk about the best. There's reasons why they're best. Or even if you're, they're your favorite, they're your favorite. Yeah. So maybe they're not mine, but it's I can't sit there and tell you how dumb you are for, oh, you love these guys. No, they're your favorite. It's fine. So today, I, I came up with the idea. Let's Let's talk about underrated and overrated. And I think because that is all, you know, a matter of opinion as well how you feel about a certain individual. And I know Jeff's not, you're not going to like some of the things I'm about to say, Mark, but I have some reasons why I feel that way. Okay. Uh, so let's do overrated and underrated. And we usually start with a WWF, but I think we should maybe work backwards. Maybe because I think we'll build to that today. Right. So, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to pass it to, uh, to Jeff Hughes, our special guest today. Let's talk ECW. ECW was the third brand during the, those huge wars in the late nineties, but really, really some classic stuff and really a lot of great characters built out of ECW, not just there, but just all together in wrestling. So hit us with, uh, let's start with underrated. Okay. Hit us with underrated. Uh, who do you think the most underrated star out of ECW is? I think the most underrated guy that I, they almost had he almost had that in ECW that Dudley boy he was Rhino. Oh, I, that's a good one. And I is. don't think I don't think he because he, he was he was definitely towards the end mm -hmm. of the run that kind of got a little goofy at the end. You know the whole no nobody knew what the hell was going on. But it doesn't mean that his work was poor. Oh, his his work yeah. was phenomenal, yeah. and he was such a bad motherfucker mm -hmm. for that that. Where the, the the body didn't matter, you know. You didn't you didn't need to be a giant guy, even though he's a big man. Oh, he was built like I'm, I was in the ring with him. He's a big <laughs> yeah. Dude. He's a big guy, but like it didn't matter as much as it did in like the early you know WWF days. He yeah. pile drove the Sandman's wife. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> not a that's not a wrestler at all. Through a table, yeah. just a skinny lady. <laughs> and he, uh, if you remember correctly, when Sandman won the title. Rhino came and like beat the shit out of him. Yeah. And says, I want a title match. And Sam and just wrestled, just won the title. It was like, you know, no. And he goes, Say, you either accept the match and you die, or I go up in the stands and find your wife and she dies. Jesus. Yeah. It was, it was like a what believable a head, right? villain, yeah. dude. He was a villain. He's a monster. Yeah, yeah I loved his work in, in ECW. I thought he was... And he, I don't think he ever captured it again. And that might have been like with WF's handcuffs, because Rhino was always was a really good worker. Where that intensity was always... Right. Uh, uh, Kurt Angle loved his intensity. When uh, Edge and Christian he, <laughs> introduced him, well, I love your intensity. Question your intelligence, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I don't think he ever got to recapture what he was in that... Really is like a year. And who's year this? And a half. Like, what if he came around just two, two, three years before? Yeah. shit kind of went. Yeah. I mean, it was a, it was a sinking ship at that point. It was, it was a sinking ship the entire time he was on top. I know that the plan was Heyman wanted to build him an RVD because yeah. RVD was the absolute mega baby face, and, and Rhino was the super super heel. And I mean, that would have been killer. And what I almost liked about ECW more was the, the TV title was more. Meant more than the the heavy, the world title. Well, Van Dam held it for so long and he lost because he broke his leg. Yep. And you always felt like that was still Van Dam's title. So Rhino having it, which by the way he uh, threw down on the last pay per view. He said, "We're not even on TV anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the fuck do I have this?" <laughs> so him having it, it always felt like RVD's title, and you yep. always wanted RVD to get back to RVD it. had it for what ten, two years? It was close to two years. Yeah, yeah if I'm not mistaken, close to two years. Uh, and that was always the match, like the, the Taz match or whatever would be your main event. But RVD was like kind of what you wanted to see. Yeah. And then all his match, RV, just RVD's matches with Jerry Lynn, he'd get so close to beating him and he couldn't do it. Yeah. Then RVD broke his leg. I remember that. He was still 
making little, you know, he's yeah. jumping off top ropes with broken legs. He didn't and, give a shit. He was high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we just say it's yeah. rocking RVD. Yeah, he was <laughs> high. He was high. Uh, probably burnt one with Heyman before he went yeah. out there. That's an awesome underrated pick. Thank you. Thank you. And now my overrated pick is going to be very unpopular. And it's almost because he is, if there's a Mount Rushmore of ECW, he would definitely be on it. Is And that's the Sandman. I get it. Who he was? He was ECW, the hardcore, the the smoker, the beer. He had a cool entrance, but when the bell rang, man, he just did nothing for him. Even his hardcore stuff was like, ugh, ugh. Uh. You, you're you're correct in what you're saying. The only reason why I don't necessarily say he's overrated is because they never portrayed him that he was. They never ever tried to even hint that he was the athlete that RVD was, or even like the innovative or anything like that, that like Tommy dreamer was, right. they said like, no, this is a dude who drinks beer and smokes cigarettes and he's just fighting now. And yeah, a lot, most of the in ring stuff was not good. Uh, I mean, it's, it's just, there, there isn't, I can't think of one where, like, Oh my God, that Sam and match. There's some Sam and moments and angles, S- Sam and moments and stuff like that. Yeah. And, but, and, uh, uh, and of course the entrance to this day, I mean, by, I mean, I would, I would pay whatever Sam and wanted within reason, to be on my indie show to do that entrance and hit somebody with a cane mm. because it would be over. And like, oh, no, he doesn't need the rest. Yeah. Now, what if he said, I'll do it, but I have to be hack. I have to be hack. <laughs> if he comes out to enter Sandman <laughs> and smokes the cigarettes and drinks the beer and hits him with a cane, I'll, I'll call him whatever <laughs> we want to call him. I'll call him Nate Metz. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> because I think they would understand the gimmick. Yeah. But the, you got him on your overrated. I mean, you know, yeah. again, he is on. He's on the Mount Rushmore. He represents what ECW was all about. You're right. When the bell rang, there wasn't a. Whole it wasn't there. good. Yeah, it just wasn't good. And that's just my that's my personal opinion. It, it was a. It's a very unpopular personal opinion. It just did nothing for me. Never yeah. had his spots, but that was it. All right, you uh, you got him ready, Mark. How you feeling, buddy? Uh. You want me to start with underrated? Yeah, let's start with underrated. Underrated ECW guys. See, I, later later days of ECW is what I watched, and uh, I brought him up in the last one, and I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think just incredible is underrated. All right. Oof. Some some people feel like he got overpushed, but really, yeah. But I thought he was. I I think he was right where he needed to be. Really? Yeah. Did you feeling mm-hmm. underrated? Well, I just talk to us. The only reason I feel like he's underrated is because I don't. You don't hear much about him. You're right. Nobody you ever talks about talk him. ECW. You go to the Dreamer, Sabu, and Taz, and but I mean I enjoy, I enjoyed him. And he was from what I saw. he was their top heel for quite a while. Well, he was hated too. And yeah. he was hated. Yeah, he got that heel heat. But like you never hear him about about him. Like I don't even see him pop up in like YouTube videos or anything. Or like or really, any, yeah, any of they play like the greatest hits. It's not a lot of just incredible. And like and and now, you know whether it was uh, a, a matter of Heyman maybe pushing him down the fans' throats or not. But I don't I don't think so. I think he, he got pushed as a heel because he got heel heat. Yeah, he was a yeah. I think he got over well as a maybe that's why you don't hear about him. And people would still know him from his ECW run more so than he was just incredible in WWF after they made with the alliance and stuff. Didn't do anything. We talked about he was out of Montoya. Yeah, for nobody remembers that. They remember you know he still has a name because of his ECW run. Yeah. And uh, I can actually see where you're coming from on that. That yeah, he doesn't get lumped in with with all his top guys. And speaking of him, because I don't know if what we'll bring him back up, but did you have you guys heard the? It's a pretty new podcast. It's called um, Why It Ended. I did. He uh, they he actually got a two parter on it. It's it's a podcast all about why this gimmick ended. What what happened? Oh wow! That dude. It's not a bad. It's kind of low production and all it's, that. It's working cool, on it. It's work. It's yeah. working its way up. But I mean, I enjoyed it. It was hard to get through his first podcast because it was just an if, emotional roller coaster up and down. And it, but he he had a lot of good things to say. And very honest. Very honest. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, it was almost it was a little too a honest. Little too it's, honest. It's, it's yeah. I'll check that out. It was a, it's a good one. It's yeah. a very. Good I just I've subscribed yeah. to it. It's pretty good. It's a good listen, yeah. and he is he's honest about his story. He's not um, not trying to hide any sort of his issues and stuff that he had like later in life. Um, and that being said, again, he's. But his name, the reason why anybody cares, was because of his run in ECW. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. not That's because he was WWE run for sure. Yeah. So you got an overrated? And my overrated, uh, although I love him, but Jeffy stole him. Which Sandman? I think. And that was Josh's say, too in our hypothetical. Yeah. So say yeah. that he's overrated is because he really, same reason. Same yeah. Way, he didn't perform really. No. No. But it, his gimmick was fantastic and he was over as hell. That's kind of why I just can't put him in that overrated is because whatever they asked of him to do, it worked because he was over. No, I get it. I get that. It's just, but at the same time, it's just like, it's when it came down to it, it he wasn't that great in ring. No, oh, not at all. <laughs> not, not at so, all. And I don't, if somebody did argue that. <laughs> they're fucking lying. If was, somebody wanted to argue gimmick. the in ring merits of the Sandman, yeah, they would be kicked out of this conversation. Yeah. That is, that's, that's where we're like, okay, listen. Yeah, <laughs> so I guess mine's short and sweet here. All right, man. Uh, I liked your underrated. I really did. Underrated? No, you got you both. You guys' underrated were great. Uh, I honestly think they're better than mine. I talked last night with you. I was thinking Little Guido just because he was a really good entering worker and he was always in good segments. He was there for a long time. I thought if you want to get deep about it, the most underrated guy is probably Heyman. Now he's not a wrestler. I don't, right. so I don't really want to do that. The most underrated part of all of ECW is Heyman, even though it was his genius and everything like that. It, but it was. I, and, I mean, so many guys that wouldn't have existed without Heyman's touch on them. But that's, I, you know, talking about the guy who ran the place is an easy way out. So I am going to actually say the most underrated guy in ECW was Terry Funk. And, Ooh, oh, wow. and the reason being was is that you got to think in 1997 when they hit the pay-per-view era, right? It's a bunch of nobodies. Like, you know what I mean? Like, to the wrestling world, it's a bunch of nobodies. Raven's their top guy. And Raven's also on my underrated list, too, because of how much he meant. But Raven was Johnny Polo in the WWF and Scotty the Body. He's guys that he was always in the lower card that bounced around, and he's their top guy. Tommy Dreamer's nobody. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Tommy Dreamer was an indie guy that took two ECW, uh, being the ECW guy. But he's kind of nobody. Um, Lance Storm and RVD are on those shows. They're, they're great athletes, and they'd go on to have great careers, especially RVD. But at this time, 97, they're nobodies, nobody right? About them, yeah. The Dudleys are nobodies. You know, these are, these are basically glorified indie guys. Yeah. And I, I, mean, I say nobodies are nobodies to the mainstream wrestling world. They're right. going on pay-per-view in 1997, trying to compete with WCW, super-duper hot, WWF is getting, you know, Austin is on, and fire, is on yeah. fire. And these guys are entering, the, entering this pay-per-view world against them. But they have Terry Funk. They have Terry Funk, who uh, now it was a little bit before our time. He was a real-life NWA heavyweight champion. I love Terry Funk. If you go back and watch him, like he's that wild, he's the wild man character. He was just a blast to watch in the ring. But he lent credibility to the brand when they didn't really have it. Yeah. Terry Funk was a well-known name, and he won the title at Barely Legal, their first pay-per-view. He won it from Raven. He didn't hold it long. It was kind of, you know, it wasn't really the point. It was his name coming into that company as a legitimate, you know, top star, other places, saying this is the place where I want to be, and he's bleeding, and he's having the crazy matches with these guys. He's, he's an old man. Yeah. He was an old, old man, man then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So he's out there lending his credibility to this brand because he believed in it. And I just, and then he wasn't around much longer. He was there throughout '97, I think. And then he had WF run with WCW also. But I think him and his credibility is is really, really huge to what ECW became. Yeah. No, yeah, for sure. It's a good one. I like that one. Actually, they were all, all three of them were pretty good. Yeah. Um, so now I got hit overrated, right? Jeff didn't like this. I think overrated is Taz. Ah, I think uh, I, I think oh. I think overrated is Taz, and I'm gonna tell you why. Okay, all right. I run a promotion. Okay, this is my promotion. Mark Thomas, I want you to go on camera. I want you to tell everybody that you're the baddest motherfucker in the world, and you're gonna choke this dude out. You're gonna choke your opponent out tonight, and there's nothing he can do about it. And then when we get into the ring, you're gonna choke him out. You're gonna beat the shit out of him. You, because you're a big badass motherfucker. That's that's Paul Heyman booking it. That's Paul Heyman just booking it, just saying th he didn't want Taz to lose. He didn't want Taz to bump if he didn't have to. Yeah. He wanted Taz to go on camera and say, "I'm the baddest motherfucker. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna choke you out. Survive. You know, win if you can. Survive if I let you. All of that." And then he protected him in the ring. So 
the Taz character got elevated, elevated, elevated so much. Like, yeah. And then he goes to the WF. Man. That was a douchebag move yeah. for sure. And then, and, yeah. then, and then he's just, and then he's just, just kind of a little dude that you know. Hey, no, we, it says no. You're not going to tell every motherfucker you're going to kill him, and you're not going to kill everybody. We're going to work. <laughs> and it didn't work out for him. And then that's yeah. Taz. Yeah. You know, and, and that's that's what I'm saying. His character was great in ECW, and he's a very capable in ring worker. He's not bad or anything like that. But also, Taz matches are Taz matches. I, I I didn't you weren't geek to see him like an RVD match. You weren't even wasn't even as fun as like a New Jack match with the with the New nonsense. Fun, or Tommy yeah. Dreamer was a real life baby face. Getting the shit kicked out of him. Taz was Taz. Taz I don't really give a shit about a necessarily good guy that's gonna tell me he's gonna kick the shit out of you and, and then he does kick the shit out of you because that's how you're booked. I just don't see it. I don't think that makes you the best. So when he gets you know, and I mean, you know, he should be part of the top ECW guys you talk about him because he was a top ECW guy but in my opinion him as a whole overrated it's just not that hard to cut a promo saying that you're going to kick the shit out when of the guy giving you the lines, and you know, and then knowing that you're going to be able to go out there and kick the shit out of the guy the only reason because you make very good points the only thing I'm going to disagree on is because he wrestled his Bam Bam Bigelow matches were fucking so much fun told a good story I think Bam Bam could be on that underrated list and he's yeah, he, he was, was out there fucking busting his so ass. Much fun and, and, yeah. and a lot of people don't think of that. They think of the Bam Bam. He moved good for a big guy. Oh, he, Bam Bam was so good, man. And early, what? He was mid 80s in the WWE. Yeah, he mid to late 80s. First was video game. Yeah, he yeah. was. In that WrestleMania <laughs> yeah. game. Doing the cartwheels. Doing the cartwheels. <laughs> Eating fire through the ropes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so there we go, man. We got uh, we got some. I think there's some good ones there. Yeah, I think there's some good, good points all around. You guys both feeling Sandman overrated, Rhino just incredible. I'm hitting with Terry Funk on the underrated, and uh, and I got Taz on my overrated. So um, let's pivot to WCW. I'll let, uh, also going to argue about this one. I already know that we we'll probably will. Mark, man, start us off. You got an underrated guy in WCW who doesn't get enough love. Hmm. Uh, in WCW again, I'm not a WC. Wasn't really a WCW guy, but hmm. Maybe you shouldn't start with me. So. No, ah, uh, you can start with me. We're gonna start with Jeff. Then. All right, I have two. That's fine. All right, let's talk about it. Underrated. Yeah, Chris Jericho for his WCW run. Yeah, his WCW run. Okay, and Chris Benoit. I know, I know. I'm not allowed to say that word. You're allowed to say it here. <laughs> yeah. You're allowed to okay. say it here. Um, Chris Benoit was my favorite wrestler in WCW ever. Like, the, to, to come, to be WCW from the beginning, not a WWF guy going over to WCW because obviously that was Macho Man uh, or Scott Hall, either one. But Chris Benoit was. And then if you go back and watch, even when I was a kid watching Chris Jericho, when when he took over that through throwing fits and smashing chairs on the they had money there they yeah. had money yeah because he was small I don't <sighs> think they looked at it and I <sighs> and that's on them and I forgot my last one which was uh, Juventud Guerrero I was gonna say you told me last time about Juventud yeah. Guerrero and I was so on board with that I because love the crucial weights because Ray was the, the masked man. little guy yeah. right and if Ray was one. Hoovy was always two, but he should have been kind of one B because Hoovy was so goddamn yeah. good. Yeah, those Matt Ray Mysterio and Hoovy Two Guerrero matches were, and you know, through Dean Malenko, that was a, like a triangle of the cruiserweights yeah. that were just the, they opened up shows, and it was like okay, it all went downhill after that. The names brought you there, but the cruiserweights kept you oh, because because you always even great. I mean even at the end of WCW when it was a goddamn mess, right? Yeah. They had that uh, cruiserweight tag team tournament. Yeah. And it was AJ Styles. AJ Styles was there with a partner. And, uh, you know, Kidman and Ray, I think, ended up winning it. Elix Skipper, like, there was there was just some but it was some damn good wrestling. <laughs> Isn't that the, the belt that Conrad wants? Where's my fucking no, belt? No, no, Conrad wants the six-man tag. <laughs> the six-man tag. Tony has the six-man <laughs> tag belt that's lost in his attic. Or I want with, my fucking belt. I want my fucking belt. Uh, <laughs> the Cruiserweights, man, the Cruiserweights kept you there. And I think all of us know that now in hindsight. Uh, and but if they would have maybe looked at 
Chris Benoit ended up being a top guy. Chris Jericho today is a absolute top yeah. draw. You know what I mean? That's a, that's but a twenty plus years. The guys career. that yeah that didn't become that, I would say Juventud Guerrero. I loved him as a kid. I would, yeah. Oh, he was great. He was amazing. I'm not going to disagree I li- with you. I liked him more than Ray Mysterio. That's for sure. I think so too. I felt like Ray's shtick was kind of the same thing every match. It was a great shtick. Like you know, yeah. he did some awesome stuff. I thought like Huey was like maybe a little bit above and beyond. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, overrated. I said it last night. I'm going to change it. Because he said he was more NWA, right? Dusty. Yeah, Dusty. Um, they, you can talk about Dusty. It's your, it's a pod. You're yeah. the guest. If you're talking WCW, Dusty like didn't even really wrestle in no. WCW. Because he, cause WCW became WCW in like 90, and that was when he was actually in the WF. And then when he came back, he didn't really wrestle. He didn't anymore. really. He was just booking and stuff. But you think? Do you think? Uh, all right. So tell the audience why you think Dusty Rhodes though would be <laughs> would be on your overrated list. All right. So to me, he gave his matches were boring. He was a big fat guy. He had charisma in the matches. I get it. Had three or four moves. He did very slow paced. Elbows. 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 Um, Which, by the way, do that to your kids sometimes. They're all they're all ground level. It's so much fun. <laughs> Come over here, throw some elbows at you, baby. But even his promos to me, like, I just didn't. We're watching Hard Times promo by the time. I, I don't by, want. By to. the way, after this is done, we're watching. It's his hard lisp. Is is Hard Times. It, it's just yeah. So I would say my most overrated is Dusty. And if you want to just go straight WCW. Yeah, hit WCW. It would probably be because he fucking booked all of his matches himself was as Kevin Nash. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I just didn't I didn't like I liked him more as Big Daddy Cool and I just think his body work in WCW was lazy. Wow. I listened uh to Eric Bischoff's podcast and they had a it was really, really a great point. There's a difference between being over and drawing money. You can be over because you have a cool entrance. You can be over because you make the save at the right time. You know, be on the right part of the card. Kevin Nash was over. He was over like the entire time. You know what I mean? Coming in with the NWO course was huge. But even like later, as the shit started to really be, be bad, Nash was still always over. Mm-hmm. But they said there's just being over and drawing money. You might be over because you are the best or the most familiar part on an otherwise shitty show, and they're just so happy to see you. Right. But it said it's it's only three thousand people seeing you, and not ten like it was the year before. Right. You know, and from the difference in ninety eight to ninety nine. So they, you know, Nash was always over. Doesn't necessarily mean that he was doing a good job. Uh, him himself, right? You just right right now. I mean. Well, Hulk Hogan, of course, is the, the prime example. But, I mean, Kevin Nash would be over right now on any show. He yeah. would. Kevin Nash shows up, he's going to get a huge pop because it'd be like, it'd be cool to see him. Not a single one of us are going to pay money to see Kevin no. Nash in a match. No. You know, no. like, it, it's... I just thought, yeah, I just thought his, his, his body work was, to me, to watch him, lazy. Like, uh, I know, I hated World War III. When Even he, as a kid, I was like... he won the Battle Royal? Or, yeah. Or yeah. just all together? The, the match uh, all match together. There was just too much going on. But right when you could tell he started booking for himself, they all started. There was like a a number one draft picker, whatever they were fucking yeah. calling him, in each ring. And he was the one guy. As soon as the bell rang, he threw like 19 people out wow. and just stood there for the rest of the match. Earl until, Breeze loves that, by the way. Earl yeah, I'm sure he was <laughs> just going crazy. But that's Real what I'm saying. Was just like, like, he was there for a paycheck. Do 10 like seconds that. of work and then stand there and get paid. Uh, yeah, Earl would love that. That's what he does at work. <laughs> <laughs> that is what Earl does at work. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, man. That's uh, I didn't see that one coming, but I uh, I kind of I kind of hear it. Um, all right, I'll I'll go ahead. I'll start with my I'll start with my underrated. Uh, Last night I I thought Midnight Express, but it's almost the same thing. They were they were too NWA. They really didn't have that much of a run in WCW, not long enough to count. Um, so I couldn't really put them underrated. I think they're underrated in the sense that we talk about like the best tag teams ever, and they never get put in it. And that kind of like I think they are like they they might have just kind of missed generation that we yeah, all know. Yeah. Um, shoot. So we're thinking, 
Yeah, all right. Yeah, the most underrated guy. And he's gotten a lot more love in today's era with the, the, the help of videotape. I still think Arnie Anderson's like one of the most underrated. Oh, he's awesome. Most just most underrated. Because now everybody again like will relate to him as the enforcer with the horseman, which he should because he was awesome there and he cut great promos. Even after that, if you go back and watch, he was because Flair was gone, you know, so but Arn was there. So what was Arn doing? He was doing good shit. He was teamed with Bobby Eaton. He was teamed with Sabisco. They did the Dangerous Alliance, which is, oh, we'll talk underrated stables. Uh, Zabisco, Eaton, Arn, Ravishing Rick, and uh, why am I missing the last one now? No, oh, Sunny Steve Austin. <laughs> with oh, with yeah. Heyman as their manager Heyman and Medusa was, manager. was also there too. So you want to talk underrated stables as a whole, that's them, but. Arn was part of that. Arn was having great matches the entire time, though. A lot of times in tag, but he's having great matches. He kind of held down that mid card. He did TV title stuff with like Johnny B. Bad. That was actually that's pretty, what I remember. That was actually most. pretty good. Arn Anderson was with Johnny B. Bad on, for especially on uh, what was it? Just Saturday night. Saturday night, yeah. yeah. A lot, it was always like Arn and Johnny B. It Bad. Was them, that was always yeah. pretty and good. His TV title was always on the line, and Arn would always beat him. And then Arn yeah. would uh, he when Flair was back, he had a feud with Flair. In 95, they had a great match. Flair was always feuding with, like, Hulk and Savage. But there was, like, some Arn and Randy Savage matches out there that are really fucking good from, like, 95. You can imagine it's good. It's all, it is. It's just one of those things. When you're always next to Ric Flair, it's hard to anybody to realize yeah, how great you are. Yeah. Arn Anderson was, was great. Great, great, great promo, too. Just, I mean... Ric Flair's promos was like, cause it's Ric Flair and it's cool and it's big and it's <laughs> boisterous and it's the nature boy and it's so much fun. Arn Anderson talked to you and you believed it. Right. You know, it like, very like that was, that was when your monotone. dad was giving you that. Like, yeah, he's not yelling anymore and he's serious. Like I better fucking listen. That was, <laughs> that's how I felt when Arn Anderson would shoot those promos. They'd be like, uh, nature's going to have himself a match. Arn's going to come and kick my ass. Like he's, <laughs> He's he's not mad at me. He's just disappointed. disappointed. That's a good. Uh, that's a good. Uh, so the name Arn Anderson. That's just that's like, double A, baby. The name Arn double Anderson, A. He's like the badass. enforcer, man. Um, so he's my underrated. My overrated. It's between two. It's between Sting. Yeah, easy. <laughs> I fucking hate that guy. Yeah. What, what easy that you like him or easy that easy like that's an e- that's that's, a, easy, that's a, yeah. a it's a that's, I, that's I, the number I, one pick it I, should be I don't all get three it of us. I yeah. just don't get it um but that's me saying I don't get it he was over you know like he was over in all those eras um the surfer sting in the early nineties had had pretty decent matches like uh, not great but but decent. <sighs> Never, there's not one Sting promo that's like the oh my god, that's so great. There's and there's like some good Sting matches, not great ones. His biggest run was the Crow Sting going against Hulk Hogan. That's great booking. That's just great booking. Yeah, it was great you have booking. a guy staying away, your top baby staying away from your heel for a year. There was a year, full year, wasn't full it? Year. Twelve months. Great, great booking. I don't quite get it with Sting, but my most overrated is Goldberg. Wow. <laughs> you threw your dip can down. You're that mad. You love him. Yeah, go ahead. Get, All right, let me right. tell you, you why. He's a, that, a little bit with what I talked about, Taz. It's easy to be the best when you're just booked to be the best. Goldberg gets compared a lot to the Ultimate Warrior because of having the short matches, just explosive offense and, and short matches. I don't think it's even fair to the Ultimate Warrior because the Ultimate Warrior is on your screen with the face paint and the crazy-ass character, and he looks like a wrestler. He looks like a star. He looks like a comic book come to life yeah. somebody it's gonna suck me in i want to see more goldberg's just a big jacked up jewish dude he's just it's all i mean he's just a, he's just a big guy with bald head and a goatee that guy he never paid one due in the business no. he got brought in to you know and again great booking brought him in to kind of beat a guy out of nowhere and then just beat another guy and beat another guy and short matches so they never really you know expose his weaknesses which was working a long match so he had those explosive matches where he got pushed to the moon top guy and he was over. I cannot sit here and tell you that he wasn't over oh, yeah. during that rise. But that rise, what, it, was a, it was a year and a half, yeah. you know? It was a short run. It, it really it, was. It wasn't the longest thing. And then, and then there's a lot of controversy of Nash beating him at Starcade. But there's no, no denying it was all downhill from there. Mm-hmm. Whether it was the booking or whether it was the bloom being off the rose. It was all downhill from there, and like I know, not a one of us can really think of like a 
oh my god now there wasn't oh my god great moments period in wcw after 98 yeah but you definitely can't think of a goldberg one and like so really he has this legacy he got to headline a wwe hall of fame class for a year and a half of of work of, of work. great of great booking uh, I, even though I don't like Sting and I don't get it, that that's you're talking 13, Two 13 14 yeah. years of work yeah. and evolving and everything. I just don't see it from Goldberg at all. So I can agree with that. Goldberg's my most over. I'm gonna just. They needed somebody like him because the the NWO was so out there and different. They needed like some almost like they a conformist a man. They he was like a, he a, was a shot in the arm like yeah. this WCW guy that just. He was NW- like their last hope. NWO kicked all everybody else's ass. Well, here's this guy out of left field. Yeah. They had great booking. I don't think Goldberg It's very good anything. booking. I I think his wrestling in-ring ability was is underrated. I don't think it's good. You do. Okay. I think it's underrated with us because Why don't you go ask Bret Hart how you feel about it? All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, feels, I'm sorry about that. How I, he I feels really about am. that. He's coming to my house to kill me now, probably. If he ever hears this. <laughs> well, he might, he might come to my house to kill me if he hears what I'm <laughs> yeah. about to say about it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's just my thing with Goldberg. Is like I think it was it was needed. He was over, and I don't think he was as bad as where we are making him out to be. I, he wasn't good in the ring, but I don't think he. I I could think of a lot worse. His match with Hogan on Nitro. Oh, it's huge! I went nuts. Well, he WWF was, didn't over. even get turned back on when I when I heard that match was yeah. announced, and that never happened in my house. Yeah, see, see, I can agree and disagree with you because I feel like his, based on his in ring performance and everything, he's definitely overrated. But when it came to storyline, the booking, pretty much all the things he's all Jeff's pros about him, I totally agree with as well. So it, it's hard. Because like when it came to me, like well, I'll, I'll just wait till it's my turn. But I I agree and disagree. It is your turn. Well, <laughs> you have, have it, your here turn. Here we go. Because well, because <laughs> for me, I guess I'll start with underrated. And Jeffy had a really good pick with Chris Jericho because that's the whole reason Chris Jericho went to WWF and succeeded and everything. But uh, uh, I didn't watch WCW enough to know if he's actually underrated. But he's another one of those guys for me that doesn't really get talked about anymore. But Billy Kidman. Mm. All right, I we we, we talked cruiserweights, and we did not talk Billy Kidman. Billy Kidman, Kidman was there. Man. Billy Kidman had a had a good run and was uh and had some damn good matches. I think he was the I, second I, biggest I, member in the flock. I definitely watched his matches when I was watching WCW, and I'd pick him in like video games and stuff. Like I liked him <laughs> a lot, and you got to give him credit. That dude. Married Tori Wilson. Yeah. Well. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. yeah. Him. Him. Sure him uh, give him some credit there at least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, him him uh, going above his weight class, he's he might be top because he <laughs> he pulled in he pulled in a good yeah, one. I'll yeah. kick this coverage on that. I'll kick this coverage, yeah. But uh, and then my overrated was between Sting and Goldberg. Honestly. Okay. So again, okay. the easy choices for sure. But I mean, when it comes to me, it's gonna. Did, it, did Jeff away. sway you to go away from Goldberg on this one enough? Or see, I was gonna. To me, I'm conflicted on both because I think. Sting was good for what he was supposed to be. Like he was kind of like he was supposed to, to be their franchise. Though. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's the that's what that's just it. If Sting was a mid card guy, I don't you know think there'd be that much shit heaved upon him. I w- but he was their franchise, and I'm like, oh boy, I it don't didn't see hold it. up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would pick Sting over Goldberg because Goldberg, because of all the reasons I said previously, Goldberg actually established something and was a success sting kind of was a success but you didn't really understand why yeah i always thought to add to the sting point is he was supposed to be the guy and he never was because flair was always the guy no when goldberg was the guy he was the guy no for sure they were the they were opposite wcw and wwf were opposite wcw and nwa was always heel territory it was always yeah. the face chasing the heel whereas the wf was yeah, Hulk Hogan. yeah, Hulk Hogan, and so that's why a guy like you know Ravish and Rick or even the Million Dollar Man didn't really have big runs with Hogan because it wasn't a matter of having the great matches. He won the Giants because 
who could and I mean the psychology wise it makes sense who could beat him because Hulk Hogan was six foot seven and three hundred pounds and jacked to the gills. Right. So who could beat him? Well, it's got to be somebody it bigger. Has to be a giant. Right. And the man was a great character. You know, and he's not a small guy, but compared to Hogan, he was. Yeah. So it didn't make a lot of sense. And you don't think of him being a big guy, but no. in person he is. Person he's bigger than yeah. you think. Yeah. Where in WCW it was, it was always Flair. It was who's chasing Flair? Yep. And then later Hogan, when he was in NWO two, who was chasing Hogan? It was yeah. the heel. You're champion. right. It was and always a heel territory. And your baby Goldberg face kind of broke them. that up a little bit. But you know what though? And this is something kind of interesting. You know, Goldberg won that match against Hogan, right, and lost it to Nash. You know that he never won the title after that. Even with all the crazy really? switches, Jeff Jarrett held it about like, 39 yeah. times. <laughs> and Arquette wow. and Russo, Booker T got five Booker runs, T, Scotty five, Steiner. Yeah. Did you know that, that Goldberg actually never got the title back? I mean, he just wasn't really part of the... the like, he didn't need to be part of the scene? Yeah. Well, as to we me, mentioned well, earlier... To me, he should have been, but maybe. they never put him back in there. Hmm. There was injuries and stuff, too, yeah. in there. He wasn't around the whole time. But, yeah, after 98... Yeah, that was a... Cluster fuck man. Ninety eight. Like, not a lot of nuts. great things to talk about. Yeah. I remember when he punched that window of that limousine window. and it wasn't a fake window and he fucked no, his hand. No, and Bischoff has said that was all him. <laughs> he yeah. just decided to do it and he just kept going and kept going by the end. And then I remember he slammed his hand down on or his hands down on the, the hood of the car and you just saw blood squirt out of his hand all over the car. And like at the not time, a smart move. I thought, like, wow, that's, that was really well done. How'd they pull that? Like, he must have had something, like, stuff in his arm. It's something. really well like, done. He almost later. died. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. But, shit. Man, are all pretty good. That, that, that did. We uh, we got... So, you're going with Goldberg on the overrated, too, or are you going with Sting? Uh, I'm going to go with Sting. You're going with Sting. Is, Sting right. yeah. I'm going Goldberg on, on the and overrated I'm going Nash. List. And you're going Nash, which uh, I didn't really see it coming, Shocker. but I kind of... Kind of agree with you, and then our underrated I had Arn Anderson. You guys both feel uh, no, Billy, Billy Kidman, Billy Kidman. <laughs> and we got the like Chris Jericho Benoit. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, the cruiser. I'm gonna say Hoovy is the guy that I think the cruiser weights almost really all together it, minus yeah. Mysterio yeah. is like there was you other guys. Throw Malenko in there. Yeah. And, oh yeah. Yeah. Pretty pretty psychosis, good. Psychosis, which is Alex Cetera's favorite. It's like well, psychosis was a good worker. Oh, no, I'm sorry, his was uh La Parka. La Parka. La Parka wasn't as great of a worker, but La Parka because all those guys were out there doing high high spots and La Parka with the chairman gimmick. And he's also big. He was much bigger yeah, than the rest of them too. Enjoy. You know who I also liked, I know you you'll agree with this. That's almost could fit in that underrated had only like really one big push was uh Vampiro. I love oh, Vampiro. Wow. He was great. Uh, he had that one big push with Sting and that was it. And you know what? In that two thousand, like there was W it's so bad. And yeah. the booking's so bad and it's so crash TV. But I thought Vampiro was a good character. Yeah. I thought it was really good. Yeah. Man, uh we could keep going with that for a while, but do you want to move to the main event? You wanna talk W U F? Oh this is uh might as well that's crush some people's I'll hearts, have man. Some things to say about you that. Some, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well it's uh it's good for the finish, I guess. <laughs> I think so that's I think we should build to it. Because if we start with W U F we will trickle down the ECW. Yeah. You know, it won't be as good. It won't be as good. I think yeah, we should no, uh, we no. finish it off here. We talk WWF. My man Mark, uh, what do you think? Who who's so much to cover? Who do you think your most underrated guy in the WWF is? Underrated in WWF. I should have been thinking this whole time. Um Yeah, don't start with me again. Don't start Maybe with you again. Maybe go to me second this time around. All is right. You want to start it? Here we go. I have two also. All right. They might have been different from last night. Last night's is kind of fuzzy. Um, Congratulations to the Suteras. We had a great time at your wedding. The dude got married. His lovely bride, Kim. We had a great time, and uh, we enjoyed your open bar quite a bit, talking wrestling. Um, (laughs) So I changed my – I was taking a shower today. I was, like, really thinking about this topic. You know, we we were – all three of us were WWF guys. We still are. You know, there's not much else out there, but – um, underrated Owen Hart. You think so? Yeah, he got the King of the Ring push. I don't think he's overrated in today's or underrated in today's world because I think everybody knows how. Yes, and he was gone way too soon, of course. And I also the British Bulldog. Now there's a that's that I can give you with the underrated on because he's not even in the same regard as Owen is. No, 
And I don't know that he should be. He wasn't as good as he Owen wasn't. was. Early 90s, though, he was something special. In mid-80s to the early 90s, he was, he was special, I think. I it, thought he was still pretty good on his run later. Like, you know, he had the match with the Brett in 95, and, and he yeah. cut the hair with the, the blood in Hershey. Uh, so that was a great match. He had a great match with Owen. Uh, it was like that year for the European title. And had a great match with Sean. Sean at Beware of Dog or whatever. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, but he just didn't. He had the Intercontinental push, or the title once. He had the European title, which was almost like a gimme. But uh-huh. He was a first champion. Um, yeah, so that's who I have. And Do you have anything good to say about his jeans hardcore title run after he came back? No. Getting slammed in dog poop? He, <laughs> he, he was, wasn't he in WrestleMania 2000 with the jeans? I think so. I think he was. I think so. I love, but I love the bulldog with the beautiful cape and the braids and the you know walking the bulldog out. Yeah, like ninety two, ninety three, all the way to ninety five. I wanted was him and Sean when Sean won the Sean run won the Royal Rumble twice, right? Yeah, it was ninety five. They were the first two in, the first two in, the last, last two, two out, the last two yeah. out. Yeah, Bulldog was the last one out. Yeah, and I want to say he was he's always like the number two because he could work and he was a big guy that could. That he was the, a big guy. That, that had was the the, thing. the gas. Yeah, and I don't think anybody puts him in the Brett Sean Owen mold of as good of a worker, but he was way bigger than yeah, those guys. He was, he was a huge powerhouse, big dude. Yeah. Um, and overrated, I'm I'm gonna go with uh, I told you last night, Randy Orton, and that's that's one of your favorites. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. But my reason is because every two years you you know Randy Orton's in a, a world title picture or he wins the belt and nobody gives a fuck. Not anymore. Not Even anymore. back when, like the only time I can remember him is the first couple times he won it. It was a big deal. He was young. He had the intercontinental. Yeah. yeah. But like now it's like he's had it, what, 14 times or something? He, Nobody cares. I, I like even tried to do in my head like the last couple like WrestleManias of the world title match or the universal title matches and the WWE title match. And like I could not remember at all uh, two years ago. I'm like, who in the hell was it? And I was like, oh, it was Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt. Like yeah. it took me a long time that to do that. It was that goofy. It. The video and would come on. It was just weird. It just wasn't good. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. But, yeah, that's my mo- most overrated in the WWE. How do you about Randy Orton on the overrated list? See, Randy Orton, he blew up when I wasn't watching. So okay. I um, Really, nowadays, he doesn't do much. And what he does do isn't that impressive to me. The thing coolest to me about Randy Orton is um, the RKO. The out of nowhere aspect. We talked about that in our finishers, yeah. you know. And I, I think, yeah, the diamond cutter would... DDP started, but that RKO out of nowhere is always over. Still yeah. over. He was. Did you see him when he was doing the punt in the head gimmick where he was kicking guys in the head? That was no. probably when he did. Yeah, he that was, was probably when he was, killer. His, when he was yeah. at his best. That was my where he favorite. Was Randy just Orton. a heel when they would just be on all fours and he kind of run and do a football punt to the head, the side wow. of the head, and it was and they sold it like a career killer. You know, like they mm. would do stretcher jobs and everything like that. I know he got Vince once with it. <laughs> wow. He, no, I didn't know. Remember, him. wasn't he putting? People on the second rope and DDT in them. And he then still does that. Punt, punting it at their head. Oh, I don't know. He still does that though. That's just one of his yeah. spots now. But that I mean, was yeah. Legend Killer Orton. Legend Killer Sadistic Orton. Was Orton. Fun. I know he did that DDT to Stephanie while uh, Triple H was like handcuffed. Yes. That was the build to twenty five. Yep. Like he like looked at him and smiled and just splattered her. There was some really good Orton. The last five years or so, not good. Uh, not and it's not bad. The yeah. matches aren't bad. He doesn't have a bad match. He it's still. I would boy. I'll tell you, like especially five or well, like you know eight ten years ago, if you're doing a builder wrestler, like it's Randy Orton. Guy. It's Randy yeah. Orton. That, that's your builder wrestler. That's he the kicked guy. that injury bug, man. He really got. That's when he took off. You know. But uh, so, but so you think he's overrated in the sense that if he's being put in that absolute top tier WWE, you he's don't think he's there. there. No, nope, I don't think mm-hmm. he's, he ever has been. I, I dig it. I understand. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. So, so this is say a little controversial, even to himself. Jeff loves Randy Orton. Uh, I know that that, he's yeah, a Randy Orton I mean, fan. I don't dislike Randy Orton. Yeah, that's it's, it's overrated, but there's uh, I can hear the reason why on that. So, wow. uh, you, what are you ready for yours, man? Under, underrated for me again is also he just he never really got, never really was a top guy. He was real popular. He's well known in the. Business and in history, but X Pac. 
Ah, that's a good one. That is a pretty good one. I love one. Xbox. I've always liked Even when he was one, two, three kid, and I sure. saw him as a kid at the Civic Center with Razor Ramon, that's watching a- him get pissed off at each other in a tag team match. Like, at his height, he was really over, too. He was super duper over. I mean, mean, mean he, DX? Like, with, with the DX, and he, he kind of got to play the underdog. And NWO. Yeah, he was in two of the biggest factions. He was in two of the sessions of all time. And he beat me. Yeah. I'm not yeah. trying to rank one, two, or three right now, but those are obviously three huge moments in his <laughs> career. Oh, yeah. oh for sure. <laughs> I would not say DX, U, NWO. <laughs> I, I, I'm okay with that. I'm all right with that. I like that. Um, the, and the, he's such a knowledgeable guy in the business, too. And I know um, Jericho has mentioned many times when he got to the WWF, they put him with X-Pac because X-Pac was the guy that could basically say, yeah, he's good, or huh, I don't know, you yeah. know. So they wanted to put Jericho with him to see, like, does you know, for Jericho, like, do you think he's got anything? And X Pac worked with him and had good matches and kind of gave him the yeah, he's gonna be good. And for X Pac yeah. to be in, them to give him kind of that responsibility, that un unmarked like role that he played of like eh, yay or nay, and he was part of the clique is like that's good for him because like they trusted him. It's like, Oh, it's just Xbox friends. That's why he said, oh, let's push him yeah. or get him the fuck out of here. Cause they hated him. But like he did, he, they all, you, he always, he did go with the guys that they were just bringing in. He was like a top of the mid card guy. He was a right place, right time. Yeah. You can't deny that. But, at the same time, like I think that might be what he gets lumped in with. It's like, oh, you were in the NWO because you were Hall and Nash's buddy. Okay, maybe so, but he was still a really good worker. He's yeah. still really good. Very and good. oh, you're in DX because you're Hunter's buddy. Yeah, maybe, but also you were, he was a key part of that. Like, well, and he was he was the high flyer before like the Hardys. And, and he was the, the high flyer. There was like any high flyer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, one he two three kid yep. was. I mean that when he when he beat. Razor was like a huge deal. Everybody remembers. Everybody that. remembers that yeah. to this day. Yeah, I want to say out. it was on my birthday when it happened. Was it really? It does sound pretty. I think it. I think wow. it happened on my birthday. What a so cool! We can look Xbox. it up. We have the network for nine ninety nine. Oh yeah, yeah we, we can roll it. Take back. a look. We can watch that anytime. Shit, I like it. And uh, overrated is a is a modern one. Like he just, I don't, I don't get, I don't dislike him, but I don't understand what's so spectacular about him. Dean Ambrose. Oh yeah, Ooh, yeah, that's people a good one. That, that is a good one. People that's love that very guy. Good and, I, mean, I thought you were going somewhere when else. When he runs that. and just like pushes off the turn, bottom, you turn don't like that and goes away. Like, what's the point? It yeah. gives him no push or like momentum or nothing. Like it's just flair. But I mean, I like him. I don't really see how he's a lunatic. You like but, him. But you don't see top guy, though. No. His his title run was mediocre. Title run was not great. Uh, by the time AJ beat him for it. Of course, it's, it's AJ Styles. Well, but, but I, I like him more was, than Roman was, Reigns. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's who I thought you were going with, see, and which would have definitely been choice. okay. That's too Obvious easy. Choice. That, that yeah. was too easy. But Dean Ambrose to me. I mean, I don't dislike him, but I just don't get why he's... When he was so, as- yeah. ascending... You know, like when he was like kind of getting to that spot, he was. I was kind of really feeling his stuff. Then when he got there, I, and maybe it was a, a mix of being complacent, or maybe a mix of the shtick getting old. But I, I do. I saw it too, or was like, yeah, I don't really care if I even watch this Dean Ambrose yeah. match. You know? I mean, he's he's funny from time to time. I like he made a Pearl Jam reference one time. Is it with Elias? Yeah. Is he know any Pearl Jam? <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I enjoyed that. That made me like him a little bit more. But uh. he's got. You know, I mean, I like that he's got a little bit of a different character from everybody else. Yeah, he wrestles in jeans. That's different, I guess. Well, Evan Gene Wiley, Ambrose. Uh, Gene Ambrose. Gene Evan, Ambrose. Evan Wiley will be out there going, that's why he hates him. Evan uh, liked everything else about Ambrose, but hated him because he wrestled yep. in jeans. And his oh, hair. Gene I don't Ambrose. like his hair. I don't like his hair. <laughs> that's weird. a good one, Mark. I like that. I do uh, like that. I think good. it's a pretty fair one, man. All right. So, I, I thought about maybe switching it from last night, but I'm not going to. My mm. underrated... Because I think he is, oh, he, maybe not a top five all-time WWF guy because there's so many, but he should be six or seven. I'm thinking Edge. I think Edge is under. I think Edge is underrated. You shut up, Josh, out there. If you bought a new phone already or a new listening device, is listen on underrated? something else. Don't break this. I think so. I think he's underrated in the sense that he doesn't get put into that top top tier. Of guys of all timers, Josh made a good point. He thought that him and Orton both got inflated a little bit because they had so many title reigns. When the title reigns don't mean as much, which may be fair, 
I just think Edge is, is absolutely a superstar, and I think he really came to life with that Matt Hardy thing. That real life. The real life thing, now in real life, Edge was a goddamn shithead. Yeah. Okay? And Matt Hardy should have came back and set the world on fire and been like the absolute baby face, but when they actually got together, Edge was just so much better. And I'm he saying, was. And the promos and everything, like... You know, uh, like I remember Edge like say like Matt's cutting this like kind of generic babyface promo, and Edge is standing there with Lita going, "The reason why she's with me is because I'm more of a man than you in every single way." And I'm like, and he kind of has that, that shitty and grin that he always did. And I'm like, that motherfucker, what a fucking asshole. And I'm like, he is good. The fact he that is good. Vince wanted that to happen is like crazy. Like he's the Antichrist. Like yeah. he should have been like, okay, <laughs> no, you're on SmackDown, you're on Raw, you guys never see each other. Let's go to work. Well, boys. He, knows, he knows people want to see that. They, yeah. Like, it makes you almost think like, is he that much of a genius where the firing and everything was all the work? Like we fire the guy who had his old lady cheat on him while he was on and his yeah. heart broke. Yeah, didn't he, and we didn't fire he run him. in and interrupt a match or something? Yeah, like that? they brought him back. He was called him Adam, not Ed. Right. He was running in. He did some indie shots. And then, like, all of a sudden he's running in because Vince knew where the money was. And it almost makes you think that he'd do that on purpose. Yeah. yeah. And it should have made yeah, Matt Hardy the biggest baby face ever. But out out of that, it was Edge. So you're telling me they – I don't remember that. They fired Edge? No, they fired Matt Hardy. They fired Matt Hardy. Yeah, they fired Matt Hardy. And then after that was then Edge getting the money in the bank, capturing, you know, he was the first. He was the first to cash in on, on Cena. Didn't hold it long. Kind of a bullshit angle. Um, but then after that, it was when he was the rated R superstar was really when he hit the ground running. Like I just, even Josh agreed with me earlier, like all of his big matches, he delivered like, he, yeah, you know, the matches with Cena, Cena were always good. Matches with Taker were always good. Mm. Um, That's a, for, that, a lot of people forget about that one. That was actually a pretty good, uh, it was rivalry. good, good yeah, rivalry. It was a good run of matches when he had, when it was him to hit the ground running with, his big time matches, he always delivered. Now, granted, it took a huge toll on his body. He had to retire before he was forty, because I mean those TLC matches, and he did Hell in a Cell matches, and he took big, big bumps. Um, you know, shortened his career. But I, I just, I really do. I think that he should be included in that absolute top tier, I the top row of WWE guys. And I don't think he is in most people's opinions. And no, he's not. Absolutely. Would, would we have broken Matt Hardy today if all that hadn't happened? I can't explain Matt Hardy at <laughs> all. <laughs> Matt got to that point where, God, you just wanted him to go away. And then he <laughs> went and did this, the absolutely so ridiculous character. The point where like, you know what, Matt? Come on I, back. I did. That, like, oh, I love it. I love Broken. Woken. I, lo- I kind of liked version one, Matt Hardy. Though. Oh, version one? Yeah. Yeah. one no, that yeah. was good stuff. Yeah. 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 If, you, if you're over the top ridiculous, we kind of like Matt Hardy. Yeah. Yeah. Matt being himself is just not all that much Not fun. as a single guy. No, no. no. Um, I agree. So that's my underrated. And uh, I might scooch a little closer to Jeff here because mm-hmm. my most overrated is Brett the Hitman Hart. Oh. Oh, that and, hurt. And I'm going to tell you why. Now, and here's the thing. I had that a couple hurt. overrated guys in my head, and they're all guys that I like. Okay? And I think the Million Dollar Man's a little overrated. I think yeah. Ravishing Rick Rude is a little overrated. I love Ravishing Rick Rude. I think he's the coolest character. The take my robe off gimmick is great, and he looks the part. Promos were Promos were amazing. And then, it's, and then in the ring, he was good. He wasn't great. I just, I, 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 there's not that one like, oh my God, you guys see this Ravishing Rick Rude match. Okay. That being said, there's a lot of, oh my God, you guys see these Bret Hart matches. I'm not sitting here on this podcast at all trying to say that Bret Hart wasn't one of the best in-ring workers of all time because he was. He absolutely was. He has, there's five-star matches. Him and Austin from WrestleMania 13 is still, I think, one of the best matches ever that's ever happened. 97 Bret Hart is not overrated. That is a top guy. Him and his heel run with the Canadian faction. That was the match with... With, with Stone Cold there at 13. And the, the Reformed Heart Foundation, the, Cal- the Calgary Stampede pay-per-view. Nothing about 97 Bret Hart is overrated. 97 Bret Hart, I would put on my show every single day and he'd be a top guy. For sure. That was the first time he ever did anything different at all. So the reason why he's on my overrated list is because his run started in late 92, you know, as, as a top guy. Mm-hmm. He never drew shit. 
Didn't draw a dime. Um, talked about internationally. Yeah, he was he was over internationally, domestically. Canada, obviously. Domestically wow. though, he didn't draw anything. He was <laughs> not a good promo. Not right. until '97 when he when he had his well, run. Him, yeah. And he just but but you know what though that was just him. Yeah. That was just that was just yeah. him like and then, not no. being the hero like in his own mind he is such a the hero for a guy who takes the business as seriously as he does. I don't think he realizes it's a work sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Like he he took his shit so seriously where no, we didn't want the next Hulk Hogan. Okay? We didn't want that. We were happy to have a guy who was a good wrestler and see a little more authentic. But man, give us something. Give us a little sizzle with the steak and like I, I never did. Yeah. And so when I say overrated I don't say it as in I don't think he's as good as a wrestler as everybody says he is. No, he's the fucking fantastic wrestler. But if you're talking your top guys, you're talking that big time top tier guys that would bring you in, WF guys and your your Hulk Hogan's and your Macho Man's and your Austin's and your Rocks and Shawn Michaels is and Undertaker's. Brett's always included in that. I don't think he should be. I just don't. I don't think he's with that list. That's a good point too especially talking about where he started and like he was kind of carrying wwf at the time from like 92 up until mm-hmm. like austin and if you think about it he was carrying them at a much lower level than they were once austin came before around. him was hogan and austin after was him was austin 97. and in between's brett and if you i, I there's just no way he's going to be on that same platform yeah, I mean, you like, can almost throw right. michaels in there too because mike when michaels had that run right before Austin and mm-hmm. DX and all that, the business started going up a little bit. Yeah. I agree. Like he could, maybe he wasn't the, he couldn't be that guy, but then I'm sitting here thinking, I'm listening to everything he said, but like, look who they had to put in there with them. He had matches with, uh, well, Diesel Waylon Razor. Mercy. Well, with, yeah, uh, John Pierre Lafitte. John Pierre Lafitte. And Isaac Yankum. <laughs> Isaac Yankum. Let's, it let's just go. It uh, wasn't great. Diesel, which Diesel's a big guy. You know, there was there was Sean and Taker in there too, which you know, but yeah, uh, yeah the was, Patriot. Even Hakushi, which was a great wrestler. Yeah, but, uh, Lawler, but he not with uh, American fans. They, yeah. You're not wrong about that. Yeah. So, but that. Still, I mean, no, the Hogan is, was working with guys. And Hogan's the, working with goddamn King Kong Bundy. Yeah, like so, so and not not that, that yeah, yeah, not that, that argument's that was, kind he of. Was, he nah. was working with Earthquake, and like uh, I think Earthquake's actually a little bit underrated as a big man, but he wasn't. He's never set the world on fire anywhere. No. I, you know what I mean? So yeah, well, no, I mean Hogan and Savage had a long run. I mean, so they mm. had each other. Um, mm. Hogan and Andre, of course, had their. But yeah, you're run. right. He had Sid Vicious and. So that that, but okay. John John Lapierre John Lapierre the feet John Pierre the feet yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah yeah, it wasn't the I mean when you got to listen there'll never be a collection of talent like the Attitude Era had like it no. just it just it just wasn't of un, names of yeah. names of well yeah. guys who earned those names because you know you know Foley earned his name there and he's always like fifth or sixth when you talk about him but yeah. Foley was he was great then um, the Outlaws like we talked about earlier were so over and they're not in that your first breath of names that you bring out, yeah. but they could have been in any other era. They right. were, they were super duper over. So we, uh, yeah, that's the thing with Brett, man. Like I in ring wrestler, never going to hear me say a bad word about him as an overall talent. He, he didn't, he didn't carry himself. I, I just don't see top star when I see Brett Hart. Yeah. I just don't, uh, even it hurts to, to sh- see, it hurts to hear it, but even you comparing make great even points. comparing to Shawn yeah. Michaels, I, well, Shawn Michaels is one is one A, yeah, of the best. You know, he's yeah. yeah. You could have say said way more upsetting picks than Brett Hart. For Brett, sure. but you, I mean, we were here when you said Brett's like your favorite. Like, kind of got you into wrestling. So, like, well, Brett, yeah. Brett, and Shawn Michaels, are my favorite of all time. Yeah, man. but like Brett, yeah. But he makes great points when he says he couldn't care. He can't. He couldn't carry the company. No, no, no. It might have right, had something too. to do with the booking. Might have had something to do with the talent at that time, but and it even still, it usually could. he still couldn't do it. Well, I mean, and you know, wrestling. There's so much of it is your promo, and again, Hulk Hogan, same kind of stick, but it's a big over the top promo. Hulk Hogan's just big over the top. Period. Austin stuff and and the Rock stuff, and it's just like, boy, they they captivated you. They brought you in when they were talking. You listen. Brett kind of had the same old stick. Was you know I'm coming out here to fight and I'm coming out here to do the da 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 da. Best of yeah. all time. Great, yeah. great, good. Best there, best there was, best there ever will be. Okay, great. 
97 turning heel awesome. was awesome. But like, yeah, yeah like that, was like man, that's something different. <laughs> Everything else, mid, good mid, you know, great mid card guy. That's 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 Bret Hart. To yeah, me. I agree. Great Intercontinental Champion. Great Intercontinental. Yeah, I would champion. throw him up there as top three. Like I loved him as Intercontinental Champion. Not my favorite World Champion. Yeah. Okay. I get it. No, that makes that makes sense to me for sure. Man, so you all right? I mean, I'm not getting thrown out of your house here. <laughs> no. Talking shit about Bret Hart. Not yet. Bret Hart's not even, like I said, I'm surprised you think I would be so mad because, like I said, Bret Hart's not even my favorite. I remember loving Bret Hart, but like Shawn Michaels has been my dude forever. Yeah. There's no, I don't, nobody could ever say Shawn Michaels is overrated. No. I don't, not, I don't not in this room, could. I don't think. And it's crazy, too, because. His second run might be better than his it first, really was. but That's I loved thing. his first. I his first run was so good. I would have I put him over Brett in that run, uh, even though they're both awesome. And then, but then that's like forgetting that he was around from like oh two to oh ten yeah. or whatever it was, yeah. where he was so fucking good still. So <laughs> good. And he and he came back for like a what six weeks or something. He's like ah, it's just you know a little part time gig. They said that SummerSlam match was supposed to be a one off, and then maybe yeah. Survivor Series was like another one off. And then, eh, eh, fuck years. it, I'm back. <laughs> and he was great. Like yeah. he never missed a beat. Only thing I disagreed with was the attire change. I I dug the tighter pants, Sean, up, as opposed to the big, like almost the, like the, chap the, pants, like. I which know. I wonder if that's, uh, you know, maybe trying to cover something. Maybe is. Oh, yeah, Listen, they always too. say wrestling's an upper body business, brother. Mm. So you can cover up the legs. You always want to look good upper body. So one of us covering something up. But yeah, he did have the the loser. Yeah. Pants. Mysterio did the same thing. Yeah, that's yeah. big baggy pants, and that's when he came back to the Royal Rumble. Everybody was so geeked and were like, "He looks great!" And it's like he was wearing the long tights. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. But yeah. Yeah. How we're you all feeling, friends. Man? We're all friends. <laughs> we're all still. friends. We've we talked wrestling for a few hours today, that was and great. Uh, I think we're still all friends going out of this. So that's yeah. I expected. Good. I expected more debate. I think when we come into the table with the points and the counterpoints, I think you know we uh, we presented our cases pretty well here. So a lot of these don't hold up without making at least a small case. No, for it. sure. Yeah, you well, you have to feel the way that you feel. Uh, uh, I'm just glad we didn't get into the Edge and Christian debate again. Because I, just, <laughs> I don't have the energy for it. Yeah, I mean, he knows Christian's probably the better word. Which is. <laughs> <laughs> in ring, yes. Which is why we need Evan Wiley here because we. I just want to talk positive about John Cena and have him go nuts. Because <laughs> he doesn't want to hear it. See, that's why I'm not a John Cena fan by any means. Like he just irritates the shit out of me. Well, then there you go. Maybe we'll... I started getting back into wrestling when he was at his height, that's and I go, stopped. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done with this. I tried. Evan was done, I think, in like 2003 Vengeance when he came out. And I said, uh, dude, you're gonna, you never seen this guy. You're going to hate him. And he goes, if he beats Jericho, I'm never watching wrestling again. <laughs> and he beat Jericho. Jericho's like never beaten Cena. And uh, he didn't hold up on that, but he's hated Cena ever since. So, <laughs> Who is this guy? <laughs> We've sat down way too long for Evan Wiley to like actually do one of these. Like It had to be like a 15-minute. He's out the door. <laughs> that'll, that'll be the Evan Wiley show. It'll just be a segment of the show. The segment of the, the Evan segment. Yeah. Have Evan can pop, that. Somebody have to go pick him up. And minutes of Evan. It'll either be the most popular or the least popular. That's how <laughs> Evan is in real life with me. So either way, it's a success. <laughs> my you ready to wrap this thing up, man? Yeah, Been talking well. wrestling all goddamn night. I think this one's longer than the last one too. Um, yeah. With all that said, this has been Ohio WrestleCast number five. Right, this is, yeah. This will be five. With and uh, Jeffy, thanks again for joining us for this. Dude, anytime. This was a blast. Um, what a great, great, great guest. Uh, hey, <laughs> me and you can talk wrestling all day, but I think we bring in some good guests, and we can we can talk wrestling with those other wrestling fans, with our friends. Uh, and I hope it's an entertaining presentation for everybody else. So agreed. Um, check us out on social media, of course: Facebook, like, share, subscribe. YouTube.com slash Matt Archer Media. Where you're watching this now, go ahead and click that subscribe button. We're on iTunes. We're on Google Play. We're on, what is it, Stitcher? Stitcher That's Radio thing. as well. I don't know what it is, but we're on there. So Many if others. If you that, know what it is, subscribe to us, please. Yeah, and uh, good good reviews, ratings, and uh, yeah, T-shirts available at MattArcher.Threadless.com. And...
Check, check me out. I'm Jared Griffiths. I'm Wilbur Whitlock on Facebook, and I don't understand the other social media, so you will not <laughs> see me there, but I'll be headed to a uh, local indie show in your town sometime soon. Yeah, Jeff, you got any social media you want to plug? Ooh, um, oh, same as always. I think uh, I just changed mine to Jeff Hughes MMA on in- Instagram. No, um, the uh, What was it before? It's like something generic, J, J. Hughes seventy two or something yeah, like yeah, that. Something like that. Uh, um, but the the, uh, Huey. the uh, it's not Mister Hollywood. I'm not gonna. No, follow Twitter it. is uh, Lights Out MMA two six five, and uh, Facebook is just Jeff Hughes. There you go. Ladies That's and it. Come follow me and and uh, do all that. I'd appreciate it. I'll watch him on TV. He likes punching people in the face. I do. He does. I'm okay at it. <laughs> yeah. And I guess with that said, this has been episode number five. Until next time. Bye, Internet.